Hello everyone, this is Jim James with AutomaticPoker.com. Um, this video is about the red line or non-showdown earnings um, that show up in your graph um, under Hold Manager or Poker Tracker as the red line. I've seen a lot of misinformation about improving your red line out there, so I thought I would just clarify a few things um, and give you guys a path towards improving your non-showdown earnings while at the same time maintaining or actually improving your overall bottom line. I've seen a lot of posts, articles, forums talking about um, the way to improve your red line is to fire multiple barrels, um, become more of a maniac I guess, and also to defend your blinds more aggressively. And there's actually some truth to both of those things, but I just thought I would clarify and help you guys hone on exactly how to do that. Um, you don't want to just blindly fire multiple barrels um, as a bluff. Instead of doing that, I actually advocate um, doing more thin value betting. Um, hands that you might not expect to ever be good. If you get called, against the right opponents actually have a ton of value that you're probably missing out on or worse just checking and giving up and letting them take the pot. Um, I'm going to go over a few examples on what I'm talking about here but first I'm going to go ahead and cover the other things that you can do to improve your red line and the first is defending your blinds more aggressively. Now, this doesn't mean calling, seeing a flop, playing fit or fold and um, defending your blinds that way. That's actually the worst thing you can do and that's actually a recipe to make your red line shoot straight downwards. Um, not only are you de just destroying your bottom line by playing this way, um, in other words calling without a plan before the flop and then giving up when you don't connect with the board, um, you're also destroying your red line at the same time. So stop doing that and instead um, the best way to defend your blinds out of position is to just mix in some light three bets against the right opponents. I like to actually three bet a polarized range against these types of opponents so when I three bet them small I'm usually I'm either usually holding the nuts or something that really has no value in calling and you normally wouldn't play at all something like jack five suited uh, nine six suited random hands like that that do have some post flop value in case you did get called but are mostly just used as purely a bluff the types of players you want to look for to do this against is any player that steals more than 35 or 40 percent from any position and folds to three bets more than 60 or 65 percent if you see somebody folding more than 70 percent to three bets and raising more than 35 percent from any position you can definitely mix in some light three bets and that'll add a huge amount to your bottom line and to your red line at the same time. Um, another way to add money to your red line is in spots that you, is in other spots that you're currently not playing pots and the best way to do this is by opening up your stealing game against the right opponents. If you have uh, players behind you that fold to um, fold to steals more than 70 percent you can pretty much open any two cards from the cutoff button or small blind and you'll show a profit and all of those earnings will go directly to your red line if you see players folding more than 75 percent or 80 percent to steals you should definitely definitely be opening any two cards until they adjust and you don't always have to open any two cards. Um, if you just want to narrow your range down to something like all suited cards, all connected cards, all aces, kings, queens, and open that, that's about 80 something percent of hands. If you want to just, if you don't feel comfortable uh, opening any two cards, um, when these players are to your left, you can just use that kind of range. Um, and you especially want to look for players that fold to C bets often. If somebody's check folding to C bets 
more than 50, 60 percent of the time. Um, they can only fold the steals maybe 60, 65 percent, and you're going to show a big profit there as well. Um, I'm also I'm going to cover a few examples here on doing some light C betting, and mostly the type of player you're looking for is somebody that um, is a calling station or maybe a fish or just is very stubborn when it comes to folding the C bets. Um, there's a lot of hands you can get value from that you probably don't think you can or currently aren't trying to. And especially on the right types of boards, you can go for a bet bet check call line with showdown value and, and show a big profit. And when you do this, you're adding a lot of money to your um, bottom line and the money is going to your showdown earnings and it's not taking away from your non-showdown earnings. Whereas if you had been check folding third pair, second pair, that money is, um, is detracting away from your showdown and non-showdown earnings. Um, so this is just a spot um, that I like to, that I think also affects my overall all long-term uh, non-showdown earnings. So I'll just go through a few examples here to, sh to highlight this for you. Um, got 10-9 offsuit. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on theory or anything. This is just uh, to basically show you guys what kind of spots to look for. I don't have any reads on these players. This is Bovada. Uh, but you can assume they're probably uh, your average um, sticky type player. And as you see, um, I bet flop, bet turn, and then check river and this is with the intention of calling any bet. Pretty much any made hand here is not going to bet unless he slow played something. Um, so his range is going to be a lot of missed draws if he bets. So, uh, But instead I check behind. As you can see he called two straights with um, third and fourth pair to the board and we get two straights of value. Whereas if we had checked this flop um, he might have turned his hand into a bluff and barreled us off. Or it might have checked all the way to the river, and we would have missed two streets of value. Either way, that's 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 a uh, that's a negative, and that's that's a definitely a negative EV play. Whereas bet folding two streets uh, gives us value where we might not expect it. Next hand, um, a common theme you'll see this a lot is blind versus blind situations where you'll go for thin value um, because ranges are so wide, players will call you down a lot lighter. Um, so blind versus blind is definitely a spot you can add a lot of uh, non-showdown earnings to your bottom line. Um, flop second pair here, um, standard bet. Um, Queen's not the best card for our range, um, but um, I think there's still some value to be had here uh, from random fives. I think a small bet fold is the way to go. Um, and then uh, a check to side here. Um, it's probably a check call depending on what he bets. If he bets something valuable like $4, um, it might be a fold. Um, but anything, any extremely large bet or extremely small bet is probably an easy call. And he bets pot, which polarizes his range. Either he's got the nuts or nothing here. So I think this is a safe spot just to call. And uh, he had complete error. And, um, so that worked out. Whereas if we had check folded that, that money would have come off our non-showdown earnings and that would be bad. Um, Ace-9 offsuit cutoff. I'm getting a little bit of lag here. Apologize for the delay. Right, let's just skip ahead here. Get flatted by the button. Um, flop second pair on a wet board. Standard C bet. Um, this is actually a situation where you might check um, check shove or bet call a shove against the right opponent. But really, it's most of the time you're just going to be betting uh, for value here. Six is a good card because there's not many sixes in his range. Um, so he mostly his, his range is mostly composed of draws. He's going to raise a lot of tens in his biggest draws, like um, Queen Jack. I would expect to to uh, raise here on the flop. Um, 
So this is definitely a bet betting situation. Let me get called again. Um, the king is better for our range than it is for his range. So I think this is a check call spot. Um, I expect all of his missed draws to either give up or try and bet here. Um, the only thing I expect him to ever show up with if he bets is if it's a value hand is something like a six to be slow played or some other crazy nut hand, um, seven, eight, something like that. Uh, he bets through 50, um, which is a third a pot, which is either a value bet when he's afraid of that heart or this is a just complete air. So I think you have to call when it's 350. Um, and he had ace jack high. Um, I guess he talked himself into a call on the turn when the board paired, thinking his ace jack got a little stronger. So, um, but I think if we barrel the river, obviously he's folding. So check calling there got us the maximum value for that hand. Um, another blind versus blind. And we'll just skip to the flop here. Eventually. All right, we flop. Um, a showdown value hand, um, blind versus blind, is a king high board, which is um, always a c-bet. Um, we're going to take it down here a large percentage. Um, there's a lot of draws out there. Um, the turn is a six, which is good for our range. Um, he's going to have some sixes in our range, but I expect him to raise the turn with those. So he'll still have some fours and some draws that he might continue with. Um, so we bet small and get called. Um, the three is a brick. I don't expect that to improve his range unless he had something like five seven, which I expect him to raise the flop with that um, frequently. Um, so I think his range is mostly missed flush draws, complete air, ace highs, um, you know, just pretty much anything. Um, a lot of hands that we are uh, beating. But if we bet here, we're probably only getting called by better. So I think it's just another check call. And he bets pretty big, which looks really bluffy. So, and he had a missed flush draw. Um, so you can see the common theme here is um, you're looking for two streets of value when you have showdown value. And um, I've said this before. You've probably seen this from me, or I think it's in my book. Um, showdown value hands only have showdown value when you actually get to showdown. That's something important to remember. Um, a lot of people um, advocate taking a passive line when you have showdown value to try and get to showdown, but especially out of position, that's pretty much the worst thing that can you, you can do. You're just giving your um, opponent a free card to basically um, just bet his entire range and force you to fold the better hand quite frequently. Um, we have King high here on a dry board. Um, it's a standard C bet. Expect to take that down a lot. The queen potentially improves our hand, gives us a gut shot. Um, so it's definitely a good card to barrel, regardless of the fact that we might have the best hand here, which is we actually will sometimes. So this bet has several purposes to it. It builds a pot for if we happen to hit a 10 or a king on the river or a jack. Um, it punishes his flush draws and his turn straight draws and gets him off the of ace highs, um, middle pairs, things like that. Um, so this bet is a multifaceted bet. Um, but once he calls and it bricks off, um, I think we just pretty much have to take our hand to showdown. A lot of the hands that um, were beating us, except for maybe ace highs, would probably have um, raised the flop or turn. Um, he's going to have some random flush draws that don't include an ace. Um, I just really don't think there's anything that's calling the turn that has value that's going to fold this river. Um, you're going to get calls from ace highs because it's a twice pair board. Um, and he had the five high flush draw. Um, pick up ace king and the small blind. Flop, please. And it's an extremely wet flop. Um, 
it's really a bet fold situation, blind versus blind. He's going to hate this board sometimes. He's going to love it sometimes. I uh, expect to get raised a lot. Um, so just bet half pot and give up if he raises, I think. Um, we do have the king of spades and two overs, which gives us some value. Um, the ten's a good card because he would raise the flop with a lot of tens. It's got to be a scare card for him if he has a seven or nine. Um, he might fold those on the turn. But a lot of times he'll, ha he'll just have a, a naked eight um, overs that we can get value from, flush draws. Not really worried about queen jack, any of those big straight draws or anything, because he probably would have raised the flop with those. Um, so if he does have a straight draw, it's probably just an eight. Um, the river is a brick. Um, I don't expect him to better a seven or a nine. Um, so I think he's betting here is best to draw, so it's just a check call with our showdown value. And he checks behind, and we take the pot, and he had a gut shot and one over card. Um, so you guys are getting the point here. Um, this is a extremely profitable line. It's an advanced line, and a lot of the top players, good players, regulars, will use this. Um, at least I think they do. At least I do. Um, and I think this this line right here is kind of my bread and butter in the small blind. I'm, I'm pretty much break even or a slight loser in the small blind over the last couple years which is one of my strongest positions to play from. Um, and I think this line right here has a lot to do with that. Um, we got bottom pair here on a monotone board. Um, he's going to hate this board a lot. Um, he's going to fold random sevens and hands that have a lot of equity against us. Um, so it's definitely a bet in position. And, uh, Turns a good card. Um, he has some sevens in his range, but um, he has a lot more naked flush draws. And we might actually be able to get him off the queen by the river if the right card peels off. And with the river being an eight, um, I think a lot of his range is just um, the king of hearts, ace of hearts, jack of hearts, some kind of random, you know. I mean, six eight is obviously beating us now, but I just I just don't think he's gonna often fold an eight. It's the same type of player is gonna call two streets instead of raising his draws. Is probably gonna call when the eight peels off. So um, we take the pot, and I'm not sure what he had. I don't think it showed this time. Anyways, regardless, we won. That's what's important, I guess. Um, Last one, King Jack on the button, uh, flop is 737, standard C bet for sure. Um, if this thing ever works, um, we get called. Um, we're, the turn's a brick. Um, unless he had something like Ace 4 or random float with two spades. Um, I expect him to have a three here sometime, so I think betting the turn's best to try and set up a uh, river barrel in case he happens to have that if the right card peels off. Um, we get called again. Obviously, he's never folding a three now. Um, he's probably not folding his ace highs. Um, so I think this is just a good spot to check behind with our king high showdown value. And he had five four for a gut shot. And we take it down. Um, just to summarize, um, there's multiple ways you can improve your red line, and that's what this video was about. Um, value betting thinner against the right types of players, especially blind versus blind, is one way to do it. Instead of giving up on a lot of boards, you should be getting value. Um, those earnings will instead be going to your showdown and not detracting from your non-showdown earnings. Um, there's ways you can improve your red line by entering pots you're currently not playing at all, and that's mixing in some light three bets with a polarized range against the right players, and also opening your stealing range against the right players uh, who are sitting to your left. Um, if you just do these few things, you don't really need to worry about any other things besides just throwing out your calling button, um, because the calling button is the biggest reason players have a, a red line that shoots straight downwards. They're set mining um, without the correct odds against the wrong players. Um, 
they're playing fit or fold. That's the worst thing you can do. You want to always be the aggressor in poker. That is the most core basic fundamental is to be in position with initiative and take the play away from your opponent and uh, only in certain spots should you ever give up the initiative. And I'm not going to go into those right now but you can check my book out. I actually cover that in great detail. Um, so guys I'd love to hear your comments. I hope this video helps you guys out. Um, Shoot me an email at jim at automaticpoker.com. I'd love to hear from you. Um, you can get my book on Amazon or on my website, automaticpoker.com. And with that, I'll sign off. I hope you guys had a good weekend, and we will talk to you later.